Hello and welcome to the World of Caravans handover video for a 2018 Bailey Unicorn Cartagena. As usual, I'll go around the outside starting at the back uh, just to go through the features. I have unlocked the uh, cabinets or the lockers just for ease of use. Uh, and today I've also got the help of someone to hold the phone while I'm trying to do some things without being too fiddly. Right, so here we are at the back. Big grab handle at the back. However, this is a big old beastie. Uh, it'd be tough to move that around manually. So we've got the light clusters. These do the uh, reverse indicators, brake lights and running lights. You have a high level brake light there. That's where the number plate goes, reflectors, and here at the bottom are the corner steadies. Okay, going around the van. First thing we come to is the toilet area. Uh, this is where the uh, pink uh, goes in, the pink solution. That's uh, notoriously difficult to get in there. However, just use an old, uh, I use an old two litre pot bottle, uh, put a small amount of pink inside, then dilute it with water to the correct um, levels as indicated on the bottle. And then that's when the, uh, just pour it straight in, okay? The cassette itself. Sandra Thetford lifts up, pull out towards you, he says, and then bring it towards you. There you went, ready? Right, okay, so the cassette. Uh, to empty, that goes forward. Take this lid off. Remember to put this lid somewhere safe. You do not want it falling into what you're pouring this into. Uh, because it uh, isn't pleasant. So push forward, release this button up here, and that will release any air pressure in there. Uh, then you will want to rinse out. So to rinse out, slide that back, open that flap there, pour some water in, close it up, close the flap back up, swill it around a bit, and then repeat. Okay. Then to put the blue fluid or green fluid, depending on what you're going to use. These have markings on of the level, so check the bottle that you're using to see how much dilution you need. Top in there, and then just pour it in, put it back. Literally just slides straight back in and clips in there. Okay? Now when winterizing, normally, stop it there. All right, so winterizing, you want to make sure that all the, the reservoir is empty. So there's a little pipe back here, little bung. Open that up and pour out the uh, the excess pink fluid. So you don't want that freezing up over winter. And then close. And here you've got your two waste outlets. So they're for your two sinks, for your bathroom and for the uh, shower. Uh, and uh, for the kitchen sink as well. Right. Large window into the bedroom. Wheels, okay. Alloy wheels on here. The wheel nut torque is up to 130 newton meters. Uh, there's also a motor mover on here. That's a separate video, uh, which we'll also send you the link to. Gas locker. Can take two gas bottles, uh, six kilo gas bottles. Also in here, you've got the pigtail. It's set up for propane and the regulator. You've also got your uh, Chris registration number in there. This area here uh, is the Alde heating system. If you are using gas, uh, the exhaust point is there. And the next bit is the water pump, which I will have to go and get and show you how that fits. Right, so, wheel water pump literally just slides in there and that clips down to hold it in place, okay? This pump then part goes into the aqua roll. And when you're emptying, uh, well, when you're going to refill the aqua roll, just slide that in there into that little gap there, just to prevent the pump part getting uh, dirt onto it. Okay. This is running on the Alco chassis. It has the ATC, which is Alco trailer control. Basically, there's a sensor underneath the chassis. So if the 
caravan should start to snake, it will put, apply the brakes just to stabilize everything there. And again, standard Alco hitch lock. Grab handles. Again, you're not going to be able to move this about. It's the best part of the A lot of weight. It's the best part of 1800 kilos. I don't need to remind people, do not use a gas barbecue inside an awning. Fire and fabric are not best, best bedfellows. All right, another external locker. So in here, there's already a water pump. So this is a phone for the door. We've got a jack. We have got two Alco wheel locks on this one. And also uh, this winding, Thing to get the spare wheel out. I will show you that in a little while. Further around, obviously got the door with the awning light, barn doors, so the top will just open on its own. Very good if you've got dogs or children. Vents for the freezer and the fridge. This quite clearly is your in point for the uh, for your electric hookup. Just to show you how that works. This opens up as such. Open that. Make sure that goes through. <laughs> and if you're lucky, that just goes in there. Also here, an external 230 volt socket and aerial point to run into the awning. Finally, this is just another locker. It's got a waste master in it already. Engage bar for the motor mover and the corner steady winder. So for outside, we're pretty much there. Um, yeah, in a minute. We'll just... Before we go inside, just to let you know, this, this particular van is alarmed. And that didn't work. <laughs> One beep is on. No, sorry, two beeps is on. One beep is off. I hope, because we'll soon find out, because when I go inside, if the alarm goes off, I headed the wrong way around. Looking good so far. Right, coming on in. Just have a quick sweep around, have a look at everything. shall begin. So first thing you do on, when you come inside on the right hand side is the control panel. Master switch is this one. Okay so the master switch on. This will light up and it'll tell you how much power is available to you. Currently 13.5 volts that's not much of a surprise because we are uh, plugged into the mains at the moment. The next one is the water pump. Um, now luckily with this one we have an internal water pump. So, very quickly going through it, in the central position, in the zero position, water will be coming in from the outside, from your external source, so your Aquarol, okay? You have the internal tank, but to fill up the internal tank, we fill it from an external source. So to fill up that tank, press external. That will then fill up from your Aquarol. And then to use the internal pump, Click on INT and you will then find you're just using from your internal tank. So central position means you're pulling from outside. External means you're dragging water into your internal tank from the outside and into internal will use the internal tank. The internal tank is underneath the sofa. I'll show you that in a short while. So also in here you have your light switches. So this one is for your awning light. This one is for your interior lights. You've got lots of different interior light switches um, and we'll go around and show you those, including these here. 230 volt socket, 12 volt socket and a TV antenna point. And obviously on this shelf, you're quite happy to put the uh, antenna down, uh, antenna, your TV on there. 
This is for the motor mover. As I said, there's a separate video for that, which I will also forward on. All right, going around inside. We have got lots of internal space, cupboards. You've also got your antenna in this, in this one. So your this is for the TV and the radio. Uh, to when you get to a pitch, this unscrews, lift your um, lift the antenna up, turn it around to the same direction as everyone else has got theirs pointing, and then retune your TV. You'll probably have to do that every time you go somewhere different. Uh, gain booster. This is like I said for the radio and TV. When that light's on, the booster is on. Happy days. In here, we've got the radio. It looks like a CD player as well. But uh, uh, this is also a DAB radio. So SRC, that turns everything on. Keep it pressed down. Turns on. So it's JVZ. So it's a DAB, FM and AM radio on here. But we're not here to listen to the music. So off that comes. We've also got a CD point in there. Okay, whilst we're still on this side, you've got your blinds. So you've got your fly screens, which come down from the top, and your blackout blinds go from the bottom. Same on all of these windows. The only slight different one is the big front window. They go to about halfway, then up and then up from the bottom again for the blackout. All of the window openings are the same, standard catches. Open those up, open up, window out, tighten these up, and that's all fine. Okay. These little lights up here all have individual switches on. And they have dimmers as well. Also, in this one, I see there's a USB power point as well. Didn't expect to see that there. Nice little bonus. It's not on all of them, just on that one by the look of it. At the front table, that just comes out. A cup of tea in the morning, glass of wine at night. Whatever you are, whatever you desire. Previously, I spoke about the water tank, the internal tank. It's located under here. So you can just see it from down under here. So under there, you'll see there's the water tank. There's also a tap here. That's to use to drain out the internal tank because you don't, don't want to be traveling with uh, 40 kilos of uh, 40 liters of water that will uh, undoubtedly cause uh, a steadiness problem. There's also a drain down tap, a yellow tap under the here. And I'm just gonna have to remove this, the uh, cushions. So I'll be back to you in a second. Okay, so here's your water heater. Um, and at the back of it, you can just see a yellow tap. Now that yellow tap is the drain down for the hot water system and for the taps. In that current position, all water would drain out of the caravan. That's good for winterizing. To get water in, the tap needs to be horizontal. So horizontal basically means uh, water coming in. Vertical means all the water will drain out. When you do that, make sure you open the taps as well, just to make sure everything comes out. Okay, so just more storage up here. Lots of storage space. You do not have to fill it up, by the way. Let's get to the important bit then, especially in the UK, heating and hot water. Right, this is the Alde system. Uh, it's currently on, I'm just gonna turn it off. And when I turn it back on, we'll go through the uh, the basics of it. You will get a manual with this. So we'd be here all week if we did everything. So power on. And we'll go through its diagnostic. Currently showing that we're 22 and a half degrees in here. 
and we are plugged into the electric. Menu will get you through to where we need to be. I've set this at a generic setting. Uh, the top one is for the temperature you're looking for in the caravan. It, it Change it just literally, it's a touch screen, up and down to whatever temperature you, you prefer. Um, there is, within the settings menu, an option of a nighttime setting. So you can put it onto a different temperature at different times and set those. Uh, so if I was to set that now, set time, okay, it's now on. When you go back to the front screen, there is an A there. The A stands for an activated function. Okay, now to find out what that activated function is, press on the A, it will tell you it's that. Then just turn it off. And when you go back to the main screen, it's gone, okay? However, me being lazy and not particularly technical uh, at night, I used to just turn it down. It's as simple as that, okay? The next is the water temperature, not just a shower, it's for the entire water system, right? Excuse me. There, when the triangle is empty, there's no power going through to the hot water. If you press plus, it will go to halfway. That will give you enough hot water for 95, probably 99% of the time. If you want, if you need to boost it for any particular reason, if sort of three or four people need a shower in a quick succession, that's fine. You can boost it up. So all the power available goes to the shower, but it takes it away from the heating. So the heating will come off. So like I say, 95% of the time, that will be fine, okay? So underneath there is the amount of electricity we're gonna be using just for the heating and hot water. So obviously off, it's not on at all. One kilowatt, now that will heat things up, but it will take an age. Um, two kilowatts in the UK, most sites have got at least 10 amps. If you've got 10 amps, I would suggest going on to two kilowatts, uh, works out about eight, some, eight point something amps, I think, uh, or seven point something. It's enough to get everything warm very quickly, relatively quickly, not very quickly, but relatively quickly. Um, and also you can put the kettle on or the microwave and not pop the pole. Because if you put it onto three kilowatts, which is the maximum, as soon as you turn anything on, even if you get that far, it will pop the pole or pop the um, your breakers in the caravan. So my recommendation is to go onto two kilowatts. You can also run on gas, so you can run on electric, and gas or electric or just gas, okay? And it's as simple as pressing the gas on. My, however, I always say, if you're on a site with electric, uh, why would you use your own gas that you have to pay for when the electric's already paid on, on, on the pitch fee, okay? In here, in the menu, go into settings, there are many, many things you can do, play with and do. That is why we give you a book. Otherwise, like I say, we would be here for hours. But my setting would be 21 degrees, half a triangle for your hot water, and on two kilowatts, you really probably won't need to change that very much at all. And turn it off, off it goes. Then if we turned it back on, if we turned all the master switches off and everything, turn it back on, it will still be on that setting, okay? Happy days. Okay, right, kitchen area, sink, tap. Nice mix of taps, nothing too complicated to go for. I'm not gonna teach you how to use a tap. But lights, so main lights, kitchen lights on this one. This one gives you the, um, the floor lighting, so to speak, the, the mood lighting, which is an, a nice touch. Massive drawers. And I'm not talking about, uh, I'm not being, it's all um, inaccurate in that. They are very large drawers for a caravan. Again, you don't have to fill them right up. You don't have to make it anything particularly heavy. Across the top, again, we've got somewhere for your plates and for your cups. Uh, lots, of, lots of storage space. This one does close there. Cooker, cooker lid here gives you extra worktop. You can, well, you're using the cooker. 
put that out of the way. And the cooker lid obviously will come up. Now, when the cooker lids up, the gas burners will fire up happily. Um, but they won't if the, if the lid is down. However, the electric hob, even if the glass lid was down, could still go on. So if you turn the hob on, that would still heat up and you could have a bit of a catastrophe by melting the glass or shattering the glass. To prevent that happening, if you do have kids or if you might think someone might knock it, it's quite the way out of the way, so it shouldn't be too bad. Underneath the oven, there is a plug. So to prevent that, just take the plug out and therefore it stops any possible trouble. Say so three gas burners, Burner there, clicker for there. Grill, or grill pan I should say. But it's a full size grill and nice size oven. This one doesn't look like it's ever been used, which is nice. Little cabinet down here. That's my favorite bit, that's where the booze goes. I mean, that's where you keep your squash and, and whatever. Microwave, uh, standard 800 watt microwave day oven. T to, it's already plugged in. There's a plug on the other side. Press eco and that will come on. It will also turn itself off after a time. Other side, fridge freezer. Nice size fridge and freezer. The controls are in the middle. This is the power on, I'll turn it off. So power on, that shows that we are currently running on electricity because we're plugged in. You can go on to gas, it's beeping because we're no gas connected. And you can also run on the car alternator. Now the car alternator, basically what that does, uh, if the, as long as the fridge is already cold, it will maintain the temperature while you're traveling. Now you will need a 13 pin or a or the two sevens on your car uh, to make that work. However, it will not cool it down. It will only maintain the temperature. The only other thing on here, the temperature itself can be regulated by pressing that. I recommend going on four rather than five because apparently if it's on five, you can freeze your lettuce. However, all I would say is if you're caravanning, what are you doing eating lettuce? So, up there, cabinet, and there's your solar power charge unit. You don't have to worry about that in any way, shape or form. Uh, but uh, when it's flashing, it means it's charging up the battery uh, when that green light is flashing. However, at the moment, because we're plugged into the mains, that's not going to be an issue. It's charging up already. So going into the, the bedroom area, we do have the option of closing out the well. And also in this cabinet, we have the plug for the microwave. More cupboard space, nice big wardrobe, smaller wardrobe on the other side. Um, in the wardrobe, so again, somewhere for a cup of tea in the morning, if you're lucky. Drawer space all over the place, cabinet space at the top. You've also got uh, more lights, uh, individual lights, with the dimmer switches and on and off, and also another USB on this one. In there, you've got the Alde heating uh, fluid, so the reservoir is there. Now, the reservoir is filled with 50% glycol, 50% water. When the system is cold, so before the heating has gone on, as long as the fluid level is on minimum or just above minimum, that's fine because it will expand uh, with heat. Uh, so don't panic too much. If you think, oh, it says it's minimum, it's nothing to worry about. Right. Okay, big double bed. This flips up and there's a... Uh, a large bit that goes on the bottom. However, under here, apart from some storage, 
This is also where the uh, freestanding table is kept. Okay. You will also see down in the middle on the uh, on the floor itself that black little hole thing there. Take that out, and that's where you get the uh, access to take the spare wheel out with the uh, with the thing I showed you earlier on. That's in the front locker. Side on the floor. Okay, so that's the bedroom area. Into the bathroom itself, you'll probably get my reflection, so I apologise for that. Don't let the children see this; it will scare them. So, toilet. Right. This there's on. By the next to the flush bar, this is the flush. You just heard that, possibly. That light will come on when the cassette needs emptying. And I can guarantee you that I'll just be, just as you're about to go to bed, that light will come on and you think, oh God, I've got to go and empty it. You've still got a wheel or two left in it. However, uh, just as this is a suggestion, uh, we have wine o'clock. Okay, so, yeah, this, like I said, this light will come on. Uh, just before you go to bed, we um, you can get yourself a, a system. We had wine o'clock, so just before wine o'clock, I'd gone up to the toilet and make sure there was plenty of uh, space for what I was going to put in there later on. Also got a uh, radiator down here, part of the Alde heating system. Mixer tap, sink, cupboard space, nice big mirror, and a reasonable size shower. Uh, shower screen, I must show you, uh, particularly when traveling. This is the position that the shower screen needs to be in. Uh, obviously, when you're done to take a shower, just bring that out. That's absolutely fine. Splash your splash around, but make sure when you're traveling, that is in the fixed position. Also got a couple of hooks here and your bathroom light. Nice little touch, towel rail, just below the uh, roof vent, okay? These roof vents, they all open up pretty much the same. Push that forward. And bring it back. Just remember though, that you must close them before you're going to travel. And I would also suggest if it starts to break. That's just a cabinet for your toothbrushes, etc., etc. Okay, so the toilet door or the bathroom door held in place with this clip here. Uh, but again, whilst traveling or you know, whatever, when you need to close it, obviously it goes the door. It's just a slide door. But like I said, when traveling, make sure that it's secure. You don't want that flapping around. Pretty much, I think we are done with this. Just a couple more things to show you. Underneath the fridge, I mentioned the breakers earlier on. Underneath the fridge, as your breaker box and your fuses, all there. It's an idea to have some spares. I never used any myself, but it's an idea to have some spares just in case you need them. Um, also up here, carbon monoxide alarm and uh, smoke alarm. Pretty much. All there is to do now is say enjoy the caravan. If you do have any questions, by all means, please give us a call on 01373 752 100. That's 01373 752 100. And we'll help give you as much help as you can. Thanks very much for watching. Got to say, but I'll do it now while I've just noticed it. Uh, down where you can see there, that's the PIR sensor. So that's the sensor for the uh, alarm. With the alarm, if a, you know anyone tries to move the caravan, tries to get the wind up the legs or anything, the alarm will go off. If there's anyone in here, it will go off, and it will make you jump. Trust me. All right. Thanks very much. That is it now. <laughs>